Right, so it's 11 o'clock. Um, normally it would be Jason and I, or possibly both of us, introducing whoever is going to present. Um, because this is the first one, it's just me. Um, I, I'm, I'm just going to um, <laughs> mute people if, if the voice kind of overturns. So I'm not entirely sure. We're just going to allow people to, to use their video. And, and their microphones. I, th I think that's fine. Um, and if it goes horribly wrong, we will modify our delivery as we go along. We are choosing different uh, topics every day. It, there's no restriction. If you think it's good, it's wor something worth to share, then stick it into the Google Doc and you're on the program. Essentially, that's as easy as it is. So um, I know time is critical. So I should say that we are recording every session that we do. Uh, we'll put it directly onto YouTube as quickly as possible after the session. Everything that we deliver is available under a Creative Commons uh, open license. That's technically, it's a, a by NCSA license. So by in the sense that uh, it's accredited to whoever's delivering. Um, it's NC, non-commercial. So we're, we're asking you not to sell the content. <laughs> um, not, not that anyone's going to sell me. But anyway, um, <laughs> an and SA, which means uh, share alike. Is it coming up? Um, right. Uh, I'm just going back to the, the main screen. And I'm just, just for the purposes of me talking about PowerPoint over the next 10, 15 minutes, I'm just going to mute a whole bunch of people. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to mute. Monday, Sunday, Sunday, what a cool name. Um, right, I think quiet has, has, has come in. So I also move around like this because I was trying to work out where to position my camera. And I'm also conscious now that I'm going to have to change my shirt like every day from this point forward, both of which are really drastic things for me. Um, so my camera is actually positioned almost in the center of my screen. Like I've built a little platform of Lego and I have put my webcam directly in front of the screen, which means it's pointing like almost at my face. Now that seemed like a really good idea until I discovered I now have something in front of the screen uh, and can't see what's behind that screen. So I'm going to have to work on that. But anyway, right. So 11.04, um, today I said we would talk about doing uh, recordings, e essentially using PowerPoint to record videos and get that content out to other people. Hi. So just just for, for general, um, for the people who have got videos on, are you all, can you all do the PowerPoint thing? Are you, have you seen it done? Like at least Susan has, has shaken her head. So I'm just taking that. My, my time is now worthwhile. <laughs> this, this will be useful to you. So um, I'm going to switch to screen share and I'm just going to talk over what I'm doing. And so you're missing out on, on seeing me and everyone else. But, you know, let's, let's just have a go. Okay. So I'll share my screen again. Right. So PowerPoint. I love PowerPoint. Power, PowerPoint, you know, it gets, it gets a tough rap at times. But PowerPoint is, is pretty awesome. And it can do quite a lot of different things. Um, and one of the things that changed in PowerPoint um, back in 2000 and I'm guessing 16, maybe. So maybe maybe four years ago. Uh, this, this is a very old slide, uh, just a regular set of PowerPoint slides. But there was a plugin that Microsoft Research created for PowerPoint, which was called Office Mix. And Office Mix was essentially a way of getting your slides, saving them out as an interactive learning resource. So you could like throw in quizzes, polls, um, you, could, you could do screen capture, uh, you, could, you could do a lot more with PowerPoint. And it was basically Microsoft's yet another attempt at creating a kind of e-learning authoring tool within PowerPoint. And it was free. So, Around 2016, you saw tons of videos uh, exploding saying, people, here's how to use Office Mix, and loads of people were using it. Now, that lasted, it might have come on earlier, but I think it lasted until about 2018, so only two years ago. And in 2018, they announced that they were going to retire this plugin, uh, Office Mix. Um, but what they were going to do was embed a lot of the tools that you found in Office Mix into current versions of PowerPoint. 
Um, and you, you can access all of those in various ways. So you'll see things like in slideshow now, which is the easiest way to do it. The slideshow, you get this option to record a slideshow. And that's essentially about how to add narration, um, whiteboard tools, etc., into our point into recording. Uh, <laughs> this whole mute thing is, I, I can see it's going to be a, <laughs> a work in progress. So you can access it by default on PowerPoint through slideshow and you can access record slideshow. But another thing that you might want to do is if you have the ability to customize, hey, Owen, Owen, son, <laughs> um, you can customize it by going into file uh, options in the screen. Uh, it opens up, you know, scary menu. If you go into customize ribbon, and what do you go into? Uh, is it main tabs? Oh, okay. Well, main tabs. Main tabs here, uh, you'll see that there is usually by default, it's blanked out, this thing called recording. And it puts pretty much all of the core Office Mix tools onto your tab up here. So if I click on recording and say, okay, uh, my license is not activated for iSpring. I don't mind. Um, here's recording now, appears in the menu screen. And if I click on that, it, it gives you a whole set of options that used to appear in Office Mix. Um, record slideshow, which again, you can find in slideshow. Uh, forums is where you want to just, if you want to embed polls or quizzes into, into your uh, PowerPoint slides. Um, screenshot, take a screenshot from your desktop or anywhere you want. Screen recording is where it's like a, a cut down version of Camtasia. If you wanted to do a screen recording, um, a lot of people use it for feedback. Uh, if somebody submits like a Word document and you just want to show the Word document on your screen and then talk through about you know, some feedback about how the, the student did with the assignment, then you, screen recording tool is built in. There's loads of free ones around. Screencastify, sc Screenomatic, I was going to say, but I think I don't think that exists anymore. Um, <clears throat> but it's built into PowerPoint, which means it's really easy to use. Um, and you can embed video and audio. And then afterwards, what you would do is you would export to video um, in today's example. We're going to set up something. You'll see how we're going to work our way through it. And you export your slide as an MP4 video. And with that MP4 video, you can upload it to YouTube. You can upload it to one of the media services at your college or university or, or other organization that you might work. Um, another option is to publish to Stream. So Stream is Microsoft's kind of media repository service if you're with Office 365. Basically, it works a little bit like YouTube. Um, they had announced that in Q1 of this year, you would be able to share those videos with the whole world. But that's been delayed until Q4 of this year. So if you're publishing to stream, you can only share within your own institution, um, it, it, essentially people who are working with the same email address as you. So it's it's of it's useful, possibly, maybe not, maybe, um, but it's, it's maybe worth looking at. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've just got a regular PowerPoint like this, and you want to, you want to record a video. You want to get some narration on there. You want to talk through the various slides as if you were presenting directly to students, and you want to then package that up as a video and fire it off to your students. So it's a two-stage process. And the two-stage process is really, the first step is adding the narration um, and potentially some, some animation onto the slides itself. Once you've done that, you can then take that forward, uh, package it up as a video and fire it off. So two stages. So the first simplest stage, if you haven't activated your, your recording uh, tab, um, is just to go to slideshow and select record slideshow. If you just click on the button, it'll go from um, I, I guess the screen you're, guess the screen you're on, but you can have the option to uh, record from the current slide or or from the beginning of your deck. So let's just click on record. So all that happens now is um, <laughs> okay. So your media recording device is not correctly set up. Yes. Oh, this is this is because I'm using this camera um, in in Zoom. And it's not allowing me then to pick up the camera in 
here. So how do I do that? How do, what do I do with that? Uh, if I stop my video, oh, happy face. If I come out of that and do it one more time, so let's record from the beginning. Now you won't face that problem because you won't be streaming a session um, at the same time. Now, let's see, uh, do I get my camera back? Do I get my, oh, camera, oh, it's, so, it's so worky. So this, this is kind of your recording screen. It's so awesome. Um, you get your, like you can turn your camera on and off um, and your, your camera is going to be positioned in that bottom right hand corner. I don't think it's possible to move the camera. Maybe it is. Somebody will tell me after this if it is or not. But it, it appears there at the bottom. You've got this third button which turns the preview on or off. Um, I always leave it on just in case in some of my slides, my camera bit covers over something that I've, I've written. It probably won't, but, but it might. So I just leave the preview on. Now, the tools that you have are essentially the slides, which you can progress uh, forwards and backwards. I'm just going to move. Uh, people, sorry. Oh, right. Um, I can move them forwards or backwards, uh, just in a normal way. Uh, I can't even remember what that 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 whole session was about. Um, and I can use a highlighter here, pen tools, basically, to write on the slides. Now, when I press record, it'll count down three, two, one, and let me start recording. At any point, I can stop and pause go away, have coffee, answer the phone, whatever. And then I can just press record again and it'll, it'll start recording on the next slide um, or, or from where you left off. So basically you can pause, take a break. Now, if you're recording a video, a set of slides, my advice to you is always just hit that record, go through your slides and do not stop. Like regardless. Just imagine that you're in front of students. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake, if you cough, if, if, <laughs> if someone phones or, or whatever, just keep going. There was a project back in 2008 uh, called the Sounds Good Project, and it was about audio feedback. And they, they showed over a length of time that people who were coming into this, when they were starting to, to record feedback for students on assignments, the students reacted best when they thought it was a natural recording something that was live um, it just sounds better I, I know there's this temptation to create something that's like a bbc presentation and that you you just want to get every word correctly and if you cough or you get some bit wrong you know it's like ah start again now if you do that you will literally spend the next three days trying to create a five minute video um, gina who is nodding her head has experienced this with me it just it just doesn't work you, you press record and you just keep talking. That's the only way to do this in any kind of sensible time frame. Um, unless you're, you're highly professional, um, like, like Fiona. Fiona's very professional. She would have got this in her first take. For me, you know, I just make mistakes, but it's okay because the Sounds Good project showed that students like that. They like to hear like someone shouting um, from downstairs saying like, do you want a cup of tea? Uh, that, that's all natural. And when we talk to people, we do make mistakes. Our speech doesn't come out fully formed sentences that are grammatically correct in every way. We make pauses, we make breaks, and when we're talking, we don't care because we just correct ourselves and keep talking. Um, that's a lot of talking for me. I apologize. Right. Let me just hide that for now so I get access to the slides. So, let me just show you how it quickly works. So if I press record, see there's a countdown, uh, then I start talking and I say, here's the slide. Look, awesome slide. Uh, learning the hard way. Learning is the key point. I, what was this about? I don't even know. Uh, but let me move to the next slide and see, oh, what were you thinking? Oh, this, this was when I was, it's all about changing the mindset from sad to happy. Um, but it was when I used to work in Japan, I used to work for a distance learning school. And my, my task was to sort of develop um, web online lessons for this group. And, and we had like a cohort of 4,000. So it was pretty scary, but um, it all went well uh, in the end. So happy faces all round. Um, this was a company called uh, Nova at the time, who was our main competition. And I worked for uh, Eon. Ah, look at that. I'm just trying to get around my camera. So Eon were the good guys in my case. And uh, it was my story about how I did that. And 
how I worked with staff and how we changed our practice of teaching. So it, I'm just going to press stop. There we go. So what a snapshot of my face looking up. This is, this is the recording uh, essentially done. I could press record again and just carry on if you want. But as I say, I just do it once and be done. So now if I close this, I'm taken back to my PowerPoint. Uh, let me let me open up. I thought we'll just leave it closed. So now you see on the PowerPoint, um, you see like embedded video, uh, and you can actually play back each each part of this slide. Um, <laughs> what were you thinking? These are the bits. So it's got essentially you've inserted audio and you've inserted video into each slide. Uh, and if you were playing it back in a class, you could just play it back and you would see yourself talk. Kind of pointless given the fact that you are essentially well, you're there in the class. So this is only really for distance learning. I suppose flipped if you really want to. <clears throat> I suppose we're all flipping at the moment. Um, right. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> then what you do is the simplest way. Um, again, you could go into recording and just export to video. But if, if you don't have that tab showing, it's just a case of going into file and export. And you can see the option you have to create a video. So when you create a video, it's kind of disconcerting seeing just Sandy's face there. That's really oh, interesting. Lovely. I, I know, I know. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy looking at all your faces. <laughs> I just, I feel there should be more there. So when you click on create a video, uh, you get some default settings. Um, I'd, I'd probably just leave it uh, on the default. It's fine. Full HD. Most people are probably going to be using like a 1080p screen if you're on a desktop, maybe smaller. Just just go with whatever the default is there. The recorded timings and narrations just means that everything you recorded is going to be packaged into the video. Um, for the videos where you didn't speak, uh, because I stopped before, I didn't cover all of the slides, it'll just uh, play each of those slides for a default of, well, in this case, I think five seconds. You can obviously do it more or less. I believe that's five seconds. It's not going to be four minutes, five seconds. There we go. So you just click on create video and uh, choose a, a, a name. Well, let's just call it that. Right. And down at this screen here at the bottom, you'll see creating the video, learning the hard way. And it just is, is now basically encoding that video as an MP4, which you can then do what you will with. Um, and that that's pretty much the process. So you just, you record, Record the slideshow, which is essentially adding narration and, and graphics to, to the video. Um, you once once you're happy with that, you you export it out as a video and you've got your MP4. And the MP4 is essentially your your lesson, which you could distribute to students. Now you could do that um, in a number of ways. You might want to give feedback on a on a slide show uh, PowerPoints that you've been given, or you could um, you can oh you can use like the screen recording tool uh, which I won't since um, <laughs> my video is encoding just now but we still have a few minutes left so I'll, I'll show you that working because it is kind of awesome um, that you can actually do like the Camtasia thing just using PowerPoint it's a really useful tool um, right I will come back to that once once that it, it should finish let's let's just wait I'll just keep talking because you know again do like the sound of my own voice you can unmute your Mics, if you if you have a question to ask. Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll just keep talking about other things. I do like I, I like the the screen recording. It is a really cool tool. It's really easy to use. I will show. Oh, it's done! It's done! Look at that! I was just talking, and it's done. So here's the video. It, it's an an MP4. Uh, if I play it using the VLC uh, player, free open source. Ah, oh, it's me! I don't I don't know. Sorry, I. Don't know why I'm so excited. So it's just a regular video. You could you could see I'm just going to jump through um, all the bits. Oh, I'm so happy that I get to listen to myself. Um, right, I'm just going to uh, stop that. Right. So so you, you kind of oh, I'll <laughs> stop sharing for a second. Right. So you you kind of get the idea. It's just um, you can record a video really quickly, fire it out as an MP4, stick that onto YouTube. Now because of the new public sector body web accessibility guidelines uh, that have just come out, uh, just come out in 2018, but you know, we're all just panicking about it now because the deadline to get all the content in order is uh, <laughs> September of this year. You, if you put it into YouTube, 
then you can get it to auto caption uh, all of those videos, uh, which is something you should do really just to make it a bit more accessible for more people. Um, oh, look, I could start my video. Uh, oh, it's me again. Yes. So um, let me, it, it, does anyone have any questions? Um, oh, 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 don't think you can edit in PowerPoint, but you could use a video editor, even Movie Maker. Yes, Movie Maker. What a blast from the past. Um, Sorry, I was just replying to Owen's question there. All oh, right. Oh, <laughs> if you want to edit after the fact. Right. So, um, so this is a thing about recording and, and about the one take recordings. I would just press record and keep going and I'd keep all the bloopers in. Like it genuinely, even though you might think it's embarrassing, your students will react to it in a much better way. They, they will listen to that natural delivery. They'll hear mistakes, but it just makes you sound human. And that's the most important thing. It's like coming across as a real person, not somebody reading from a script. Uh, that's the thing that you want to avoid. It's, it's, and, and having that kind of real human contact, probably now more than ever is really important. So coming across as a real person and not just reading off a script, is, is what you're ideally wanting to aim for. If you want to edit video, um, yes, uh, Movie Maker is an option. It's, it's no longer embedded now within, um, within Windows, uh, but there are some free editing tools that you can use. And if you upload it into something like YouTube, you, you have some editing tools within that too. There's, there's a good online video editor that I recently saw and tried. I forget what it is, but I'll stick a link in to, to after the recording um, and let you know what that might be. Um, I, I recognize I have seven minutes left. Uh, we, we use the last 10 minutes as a bit of a discussion, um, but I just want to quickly, I'm just gonna share my screen again and just go into PowerPoint one last time um, to just quickly show you like in PowerPoint, just to explain um, if you want to use the screen recording tool, it is awesome. Um, so if I click on screen recording, it just basically, this menu comes up at the top and it allows you to record. First of all, you have to select the area of the screen that you want to take. So uh, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to select the whole screen. You might just want to select part of your window. Uh, once you're ready, you just record. Uh, Windows logo key, shift and Q to stop the recording. So you, you would just be recording. Um, I don't know what I would be showing you. Uh, where's my website? Uh, what am I looking at? Um, oh, there's this is the Sounds Good project. It was like 10 years ago, but there's a lot of interesting things on it about audio feedback. Um, if you want to do the whole Microsoft course, if you go into the Microsoft Educator Center, uh, they actually have a course, uh, flipped instruction with the PowerPoint recorder, and that covers, uh, in a slightly different way, I think, um, the tools about recording sessions within PowerPoint, they probably do it a lot better than me, to be fair. But you know, I don't get to listen to my own voice if I did it that way. So it takes about an hour, they suggest, to go through this course, but it's free. Uh, there's tons of resources on the Microsoft Educator Center. It's really good. Um, and equally, literally, you could just go to Google and just say, how do I record video in PowerPoint? And you get like the two minute version of this. Um, so uh, if I press on my keyboard, important not to forget this, the Windows key, uh, the shift key and Q, it just stops. And that's me embedded, uh, that screenshot of me talking in there. Um, so it, it, it's essentially, it's just a video, uh, whatever you've just captured on screen directly into PowerPoint. And you could save that out as a video if you wanted to. So it's kind of cool when a student submits something uh, like you might be experiencing now, if students are submitting Word documents, if you want to like look at an assignment, if it's in digital format, then just do a, a, a screen capture, just do like this kind of screencast where you stick their work on the screen and you talk through it, save it as a video, do it in PowerPoint, it's easy to use. Uh, once you've got the video, uh, fire that video back to your, your student. Uh, you have a number of ways you can do that. If you're not working at a college or university, you could stick it onto YouTube and create a private video and just share it with your student. Uh, other platforms are available. Um, if, if you're available, if you're in an institution, you might have a, a media library. Um, I can't remember what are the media libraries that are available in colleges, what, what kind of examples? Um, Fiona, just because you're the third name on, on that list, what, what's what's available in Fife? 
do you have like click view or um what's the other ones there's one at fourth valley that i don't remember uh it, it used to be called median or something no i i, I forget um so, so noah had have to check <laughs> sorry <laughs> But there's a ton of options out there, and so all I all I want to say is I, you know, if you if you need to record video, PowerPoint, I just so do it in that. Um, most people use slides to really give presentations, so it's a really quick way of doing it. Uh, I know a lot of the universities and colleges are using that as a tactic to um, engage with staff to record content and get it out to students. Staff are likely to be pretty familiar and comfortable with PowerPoint. Um, we all kind of live within that Microsoft ecosystem. And, and there might be better tools out there. I, I, I would say, you know, you, you probably get your Camtasias and other stuff, but just go with stuff that just works and is easy to teach and to train and get other people to use. Um, and students can use it too, which is awesome. You know, if students could produce stuff, if they need to give a presentation, why not just fire it in and do something in this? That, you know, it's, it's a useful tool to use. Um, the last two minutes. So there's also a, a really good coaching tool in the online Office 365 version of PowerPoint. I'm sure somebody else will cover it in a future thing, but it's it's brilliant. Like it's it's literally, it's so much fun. It's basically where you practice delivering a PowerPoint presentation by yourself and you'll get feedback around, you know, were you talking too much? Were you just reading off the slides? Um, were you pausing too much? It's got loads of really interesting feedback in it, but I'm sure we can save that for another session. So in these last two minutes, does anyone have a question or something to share? Um, tell me that I'm just doing it all wrong and there's a better way. I'm sure there is. But then would that involve me talking all the time and listening to my own voice? Literally no one else has got a word in, but Susan's going to say something. I feel it. I, I'm just going to say that really well explained and it's exactly the tool that I'm feeling I'm needing. I'm needing the kind of connection, you know, that social connection with yeah. people that I'm speaking to much more personal than, than an email, you know, yeah. for text and stuff. And I love your point about not scripting it to make it very um, sort of informal and doesn't matter if you stutter a bit or whatever. <laughs> so uh, I really loved that session. It's going to be great. Awesome. So thank you. <laughs> I, as you can tell, very little of what I do is scripted. Uh, <laughs> Does that come across? I mean, really? <laughs> um, so does anyone else have um, yeah, anything to ask, say, do? Um, we're, we have a whole minute to discuss this. Is this session being recorded? Yes, Rosemary. I have not spoken to you. I know. I haven't spoken to you for ages. <laughs> Sorry. That's my bad. That truly is. Uh, um, yes, uh, all these sessions are recorded. It'll be onto YouTube in the next hour if i can manage it quicker if i can i'm not going to edit anything i just i'm just going to capture the whole lot and fire it up there um it's in the program so if you find yourself uh, i'm just typing it into chat uh bitly uh bitly slash it's vb sessions lowercase uh it, it's it's there i think you have to add a http slash whatever <clears throat> to get it to work um I should really do that. That's so unprofessional of me. Um, but anyway. <laughs> um, yes, so uh, anything else? Oh, it's, it's 30. Like I, I literally have to cut myself off I, and I'll, I'll miss me speaking. I mean, I'll miss all of you too uh, and hope you're all like, you know, keeping safe and kind of enjoying the time at home. Um, I really miss my coffee machine my, my coffee machine, the coffee machine uh, in the CDN office. I, I desperately, I, I would have plumbed it in at home. I would have done that. It, I, I miss the caffeine. What about um, your CDN colleagues, Kenji? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, like, it's not like we're in the office. So like, if I could have taken it home and someone would have got the use of it. So I, I, and I, I would share, I could bring it around. We could like have a week each. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, it, it, I'm, I'm running over uh, by a minute. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to run the video too long because, you know, you'll be sitting here watching this and going, is, has he not stopped yet? Um, thanks for this. We're going to have another session tomorrow with um, uh, Fiona, Fiona, which, who is like down there on my screen. Um, <clears throat> Who's not showing your face just now, but she will. Uh, it will be much better than this, obviously. Uh, in fact, yeah, everything will be better well, than this. So. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be good, Fiona. So uh, until tomorrow, 
uh, stay safe, uh, stay happy. Um, and, and my track listing for today's session, because everybody has to suggest a track that kind of reflects the coronavirus sort of uh, challenge that we're facing just now. It, it, it's called, it's by REM. I, I think you should go away and listen to it. Um, it's the end of the world as we know it. Um, and I feel fine because uh, I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, uh, we're just being positive about the situation. Try to make everyone smile. At the end, we'll make a, a playlist, uh, an album, ah, like a virtual bridge album, and we'll share it out with everyone. Okay, so until next time, thanks everyone for joining and see you later. Bye for now.